Hi everyone. I hope that you've been persevering through your Bible reading calendars uh, through this first month of the year. If you are following that McShane calendar, uh, you've been working through the book of Acts, and this week you'll come across uh, this incident in Acts chapter 19 when Paul goes to Ephesus to spread the gospel there, and he encounters a group of disciples who had been baptized by John the Baptist, but they had yet to hear the fullness of this gospel message of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and so Paul gives that to them, and then he baptizes them in the name of Jesus, and something very interesting happens, and you might have scratched your head and thought, what's going on there? What do we do with that? Let me first just read that from chapter 19, verse uh, 4 on, and on. Paul said John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who is to come after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. So, we have this baptism that's associated with um, this receiving of the Spirit, and then this expression of uh, miraculous signs, prophesying, speaking in tongues. We saw this back in chapter 8 when the disciples were baptizing believers in Samaria and then there were those accompanying signs and wonders. We saw it again in chapter 10 when Peter baptized the household of Cornelius, a Gentile household, and when they were baptized and they believed in Jesus Christ, they started speaking in tongues, amazing all the believers. And so Christians have looked at these texts and wondered what do we do with these? When we read the book of Acts, we have to have a good balance between what is descriptive and what is prescriptive. Uh, descriptive is uh, simply describing some historical event that happened, and then prescriptive is what's the prescription, what's the lesson, what's the command that me as a Christian, you know, centuries later is, is supposed to practice today. And so we have to be careful to balance those. Is the text descriptive or is it prescribing something? Some Christians have looked at these baptism of the Spirit text and, and pulled out a prescription uh, to say that every Christian should have this experience where you have uh, gifts, you have tongues, you have prophecy, because that is a true sign that you've been baptized by the Spirit, that you have the Holy Spirit. And of course, you're not a Christian if you don't have the Holy Spirit. And so there's a teaching out there called the baptism of the Spirit where um, you have to receive a second baptism and a sign of your salvation is going to be that you're speaking in tongues. Uh, that is incorrect because we read these texts mainly descriptively. This is describing a unique time and age in church history when the gospel was going from Jerusalem into Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And more significantly, or uh, more significantly, that meant that God's plan of redemption was now going out, extending from the Jews and now to the Gentiles. If you remember Acts chapter 2, uh, that's what we had at Pentecost. When the disciples were baptized by the Holy Spirit, they began speaking in tongues, actual languages to share the gospel with the Gentiles. And then what you have in Acts is uh, many Pentecosts. You have moments that mirror what happened in chapter 2 uh, that show that the Gentiles are now also receiving the Spirit. They're included in God's grand plan of redemption. So baptism of the Spirit uh, is signs, wonders, prophecy tongues. Is that a, a sign of your salvation? No. Uh, does every Christian have to exhibit these kinds of signs to show that they truly have the Holy Spirit? No. Um, are there actual, is there a place for these kinds of signs? Is there still prophecy? Is there still speaking in tongues though? Um, that's something that we'll probably get to when we go through the book of 1 Corinthians.